The importance of data protection. All data or information that relates to an identifiable individual that your business stores or handles needs to be properly protected. It safeguards data from corruption and unauthorized access by internal and external people. It protects company from financial loss, reputation, damage, consumer confidence disintegration, and brand erosion. And it protects crucial element of company's reputation. Key pieces of information that are commonly stored by businesses, be that employee records, customer details, loyalty schemes, transactions, or data collection, need to be protected. This is to prevent that data from being misused by third parties for fraud, such as phishing scams and identity theft. Common data that your business might store include Names Addresses Emails Telephone numbers Bank and credit card details Health information The Data Protection Act contains a set of principles that organizations, government and businesses have to adhere to in order to keep someone's data accurate, safe, secure and lawful. These principles ensure data is only used in specifically stated ways, not stored for longer than necessary, used only in relevant ways, kept safe and secure, used only within the confines of the law. There are five protection methods that we will discuss today and these are encryption, hashing, data masking, tokenization, and anonymization. Encryption Encryption is a means of securing digital data using one or more mathematical techniques, along with a password or key used to decrypt the information. Digital encryption process translates information using an algorithm that makes the original information unreadable. It is crucial in a digitally connected world to keep private information, messages, and financial transactions private and secure. Encryption is the process of taking plain text, like a text message or email, and scrambling it into an unreadable format called ciphertext. This helps protect the confidentiality of digital data either stored on computer systems or transmitted through a network like the Internet. When the intended recipient accesses the message, the information is translated back to its original form. This is called decryption. To unlock the message, both the sender and the recipient have to use a secret encryption key a collection of algorithms that scramble and unscramble data back to a readable format. This is what an encryption process looks like. There are two major data encryption schemes. With a symmetric key system, also known as secret key system, all parties have the same key. The keys can be used to encrypt and decrypt messages and must be kept secret or the security is compromised. For the parties to get the same key, there must be a way to securely distribute the keys. While this can be done, the security controls needed can make this system impractical for widespread and commercial use on an open network like the Internet. Asymmetric key systems can solve this problem. In an asymmetric key system, also known as a public-slash-private key system, two keys are used. One key is kept secret and therefore is referred to as the private key. The other key is made widely available to anyone that needs it and is referred to as the public key. The private and public keys are mathematically related so that information encrypted with the public key can only be decrypted by the corresponding private key. Hashing Hashing is the process of transforming any given key or a string of characters into another value. This is usually represented by a shorter, fixed-length value or key that represents and makes it easier to find or employ the original string. It is the most popular use for hashing is the implementation of hash tables. A hash table stores key and value pairs in a list that is accessible through its index. Hashing is relevant to but not limited to data indexing and retrieval digital signatures, cybersecurity, and cryptography. Hashing is used for as a data retrieval. Hashing uses functions or algorithms to map object data to a representative integer value. 
A hash can then be used to narrow down searches when locating these items on that object data map. It is also used for data signatures, hashing helps encrypt and decrypt digital signatures used to authenticate message senders and receivers. In this scenario, a hash function transforms the digital signature before both the hashed value, known as a message digest, and the signature are sent in separate transmissions to the receiver. Here is a simple illustration of what a hash function does by taking a plain text data input and using a mathematical algorithm to generate an unreadable output. Data masking. Data masking software hides data by obscuring letters and numbers with proxy characters. The data is still there behind the masking. The software changes the data back to its original form only when an authorized user receives that data. Masking is a typical example of irreversible protection. It replaces a given number of characters of a sensitive value with a set of masking characters. Here are several reasons data masking is essential for many organizations. Data masking solves several critical threats. Reduces data risks associated with cloud adoption. Makes data useless to an attacker while maintaining many of its inherent functional properties. Typical use cases for masking are the irreversible protection of test data or data in non-production environments, the irreversible anonymization of PII or the limited visibility of data for employees or customers. It allows sharing data with authorized users, such as testers and developers, without exposing production data. When implementing masking as a protection method, there is a difference between dynamic and static data masking. Dynamic data masking is often used for production systems, building a masking layer on top of the existing data to prevent that certain roles or people see certain data, but the data inside is still the same. Static data masking. Data masking changes the data permanently, usually on the database level. While static data masking limits the usability of a dataset permanently and might therefore not be used in production environments, it is more secure as it reduces the risk of accidentally exposing the clear text values due to misconfiguration. Tokenization Tokenization is a reversible protection mechanism. When applying tokenization, a sensitive data element is substituted by a so-called token. The token itself maps back to the original data element but doesn't expose any sensitive data. One of the most widespread uses of tokenization today is in the payments processing industry. Tokenization allows users to store credit card information in mobile wallets, e-commerce solutions, and POS terminals to allow the card to be recharged without exposing the original card information. The process of turning a meaningful piece of data, such as an account number, into a random string of characters called a token that has no meaningful value if breached. Tokens serve as reference to the original data, but cannot be used to guess those values. Anonymization Data anonymization seeks to protect private or sensitive data by deleting or encrypting personally identifiable information from a database. Data anonymization is done for the purpose of protecting an individual's or company's private activities while maintaining the integrity of the data gathered and shared. It is also known as data obfuscation, data masking, or data de-identification. Anonymization of data is done in various ways including deletion, encryption, generalization, and a host of others. A company can either delete personally identifiable information, PII, from its data gathered or encrypt this information with a strong passphrase. When using anonymization, the data has to be changed in a way that a data subject can no longer be identified. Anonymization is irreversible. The aim of anonymization method is to allow sharing such data without compromising the privacy of the user. Data-centric security. These are the steps to implement data-centric security. First is to locate sensitive data. In order to effectively secure sensitive data, companies must identify all places where data is stored, processed, or used. 
This is a necessary first step in complying with many regulations such as carrying out regular risk assessments, logging access and data disposal. Second is data minimization and reduction of scope. It is a common best practice to reduce the amount of data being processed. Third, data protection risk and impact assessments. The threats to personal data and cardholder data are changing constantly. In order to keep up, organizations must conduct regular reviews to gauge how well data is protected. Next is to define policies and protection methods. Security policies should define which data is going to be protected and which protection methods to use. The last step is audit trail. In addition to the accessibility limitations referenced above, logging access to sensitive data is another indispensable part of any data security strategy. Access logs are useful for proactively detecting potentially malicious activity and, if a breach does occur, they are essential to investigations.